Hello again, Rabbi. Hello, Joe. I recently had occasion to think about something that I have said many times, which is that artists are egomaniacs. Uh, all kinds of artists, uh, painters, actors, poets, writers. And while it sounds derogatory, I find it a necessary characteristic. You have to believe that you are so good at drawing lines on a piece of paper that somebody will pay you money just to look at them. And my brother, an actor, I've defended many times saying he has to have a tremendous ego because he has to stand up in front of a bunch of people, mm -hmm. pretend to be somebody else and think to himself, I'm doing this so well that somebody's going to give me money to do it. But the downside of that, of course, is people who think they're good at something and they're not necessarily that good. <laughs> what are your thoughts on this? That really, really neat. We're talking about being realistic. You know, Every thought we have isn't real. We have thoughts. We have perceptions of ourselves. And sometimes they're, they're accurate. Sometimes we have thoughts about ourselves that aren't reflected. I am the greatest. Look at an 18-year-old boy. Everyone thinks he's an Andreo, and Andreo Dreddy. Everyone thinks they're race car drivers. Or Ken Block, who's going up Pikes Peak. Every 18-year-old thinks that in lots of accidents. So you're right, but it's the unrealistic part that's the problem, not the ego part. It's not looking at the ego and being realistic. What are my strengths? What are my weaknesses? What am I good at? Let me take a look at how people respond to my acting. Let me see how people respond to my cartoons. Let me see when I look at my cartoons, Am I being realistic about, oh, this is terrific and the whole universe is, has bad taste? Maybe I'm not so good and the universe is actually has good taste. So we're talking about accepting what is. I've talked about this before, Joe. This is a major problem that we create for ourselves. Our unrealistic expectations. You know, go into a restaurant, and I'll go in with people and they'll be talking about the restaurant and their expectations are such that there's no chef in the universe that could prepare our meal according to their expectations. So of course it doesn't live up to it because they created something that can't be done. Rather, you know, I don't know, this is really a good restaurant, has a good track record, let's go out and let's see what, we'll, what we get. And what do you like to eat? One of my favorites is liver and onions. So when I go to a restaurant, I look to see if they have liver and onions on the menu and you're already laughing and smiling because people with me go to another table because it's generally not considered popular. But if a place is offering it because I don't cook it at home and I enjoy eating it. And that I think is what we're talking about here is yes, ego is important but it's important to keep it in perspective. Look at movie stars and actors that have gotten into incredible trouble because of their, their ego was not held in check or was not balanced. They thought so much of themselves and so much of what they did that their behavior was self-destructive. It's not realistic. And we have lots of very good actors who have retired like good lives, good people. And we don't read about them in the papers. So how does that factor against ambition? Should we stick to what we think we're good at? Should we never try to do something more? Au contraire, Monsieur. What we want to do is do exactly what you said. Let's find out. I think I'm going to be a great basketball player. I'm 75, I'm 5'10", I weigh 175. In general, that's not the profile of the NBA. N NBA. So... That's ridiculous, just patently ridiculous. So I wanna stop and go, wait a minute, what are my skills? What does my body look like? Uh, I wanna try something I haven't tried. However, what's reasonable? And we are gonna say, well, what about unreasonable? Me being a major league baseball player is unreasonable and then being upset because I'm not. 
So you definitely want to try things. Have you done heavy oils, Joe, or do you just do cartoons? I've tried oils. I, had, and? Uh, I want to go back to it. And? But, and, and I wasn't very good at it the first few times. Okay. So but I want to return to it because I, I your, don't want to give up. And where is that practical line? But that's your skill set, Joe. That's why I asked you about heavy oils. Now, um, gee, why don't you summit Mount Everest? Uh, because I wouldn't make it to the first base camp. <laughs> exactly right. That's not a reasonable goal. So when, when we look at ourselves, we want to be really nice. We want to be kind to ourselves. What are my skills? What have I been doing with my life? What about my body? What about my height? What about my eyesight? What can I try that I haven't tried that's not outside, that's not automatically failing or automatically going to hurt people? Uh, if I could do, I can't summit Everest either. I don't think I could make it to base camp. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be a mistake for lots of reasons. So I'll stop and go just because I think it, just as a thought, doesn't mean it's real and doesn't mean I can do it. I'm, I'm going to look now and go, hmm, I'm going to do some podcasts. Hmm, I'm going to look into some public speaking, some other things as a variant of what I'm doing. I would love someone to pay me to be a nude model for an art class. I don't think I have the body of an individual that one would want to use as a model in art class. And so- You've obviously never been to art class. <laughs> <laughs> but you understand what I'm saying, Joe? I'm talking about realistic in terms of ourselves. So definitely we want to try things and we want to take a look at who can help me. Do I have a coach? Is there someone that could coach me into uh, the Senior Olympics? And what event? would I be able to sustain? Rather than coming up with something that I'm just not gonna work. So why am I doing it? Because I have this image of myself as being a great actor, just undiscovered. So I'm gonna to go to the drugstore and sit on a stool and sit until I'm discovered. Doesn't seem but, to happen, Joe. But still there is the story you hear, not every day, but often enough of the 85 year old grandmother running the Kalahari Marathon. Right. Or uh, going to medical school in your 60s because you always wanted to be a doctor or yeah. anyone or a number of other Joe, things. What's fascinating, have you, read the, have you read about the people's lives? It wasn't out of the blue. You're dealing with people who had the interest, who did studying on their own, who had the intellect. You're not talking about a paraplegic running the Boston Marathon. You don't, you're not reading about things that are contraindicated or completely absurd. When you, I read any of those articles, you look at grandma's background, you look at how she was brought up and you go, she followed a trend in herself. She was honest to herself. She wasn't doing something outside of who she was. It's presented in the paper as a phenomena, as a miracle, as something, but that sells papers. The reality is these people are consistent with their lives and they were just going for something that was always their dream and something that they practiced for. It wasn't out of the blue. So the only real boundary is the one that we have in our own minds. We, we create our own problems and barriers by saying I can't or I can't do that or no one would let me rather than saying, let me see, let me talk to someone, let me find out. Let me take some classes in medical school and see what that's like. See what that does to me. Let me pick up a brush and use heavy oils. Well, I know what I'm going to do next, Rabbi. I'm going to find an art school that needs a model and I'm going to give them your name. But I never grow tired of these conversations and I definitely go to bring a heavy oils and a canvas to that class. So thank you very much. And I look forward to you seeing me in that class. Thank you, Joe.